Hello everyone and thank you for clicking on the Literacy Volunteers of Harrison County YouTube channel. We're a nonprofit United Way agency. We would love for you to subscribe to our videos below and if you click the bell icon you'll be notified when we put up new videos. This is our first video of 2022 and we are excited to get back with you. We've taken a little bit of a break but the new year looks very promising. Today we're going to look at the differences between nuts and seeds. So nuts, we'll look at those first. Scientifically, nuts are one-seeded or two-seeded dry fruits that are encased within a hard shell. The hard shell is called a pericarp. Usually in science where you see carp, then we're talking about a body, like the body of something, and then peri means around. So that's the shell that encases, the hard shell that encases those. They are what are called indehiscent. Um, they do not crack open and release the seeds on their own upon reaching maturity. So they have to be cracked open. Most of them are edible. They're very high and, and good in rich fats, fats that are good for you, not bad fats, like an avocado fat, um, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. They have a high level of oil in them, and the oil we can use for energy and, and, or food that, that we consume. Um, here's some examples, acorns, hickories, chestnuts, hazelnuts. Those are all true nuts, meaning that they're enclosed in this pericarp. This one, they're one-seeded or two-seeded fruits enclosed in a pericarp. That means that they are true nuts. So here's a little um, anatomy diagram, and we're going to look at um, a couple of real life examples in a minute. But we have this anatomy of a nut. And so here, this is the outside of it, and here what it has been is been split open. And we have the, the pedestal. Anytime you see PED, that means foot in Latin. So that's the foot or the stalk of the, of the nut. Then there's the pericarp that I told you about, right? It's a dehiscent husk that surrounds that. And then inside, we have the placental region where that seed was attached. A placenta, just like a baby, you know, that you have inside of a placenta, just the same thing. It's, it's been attached here. And then here they are, they're showing us the hilum, and that's the um, scar by which it was attached inside of that pericarp. When we take it out, there's a little mark on it. And this is the actual seed. And then here I've given you an example of a coconut. Everybody kind of knows what a coconut is. The outside sometimes is a little bit furry. It looks like a, looks like a um, bowling ball, right? So we have this plugged pores here in our coconut and then a functional pore. And then we have what's called the endocarp. And that's the hard layer that contains the seed. So here we have a seed enclosed in a pericarp enclosed in the endocarp. Um, here's a little shoot right here and what we've done is cut our coconut and we can see the root that came here that was growing down into into the ground and then you can see the exocarp the outer layer the meso which means middle that's the middle that's the fibrous part and then the endocarp which actually surrounds this seed um, the coconut has what's called uh, an endosperm right endo means inside sperm we're talking about reproduction but that's the meat of the coconut that would be the part that you would eat if you were going to eat a coconut um, and then they have this part that's called the apple and that's just a sweet spongy mass also called a cotyledon that dissolves and absorbs all of that endosperm that's where all of the nutrients come from so that then when you eat coconuts very good for you coconut oil is good for you um, things that you could use to for energy in your body right um, seeds are small plants that contain stored food and that's the important part we need that stored food that provides nourishment to that mother plant um, they have protective coats called husks or seed coats they are produced by the, pl the plants as part of its reproductive process, and it's separate from the fruit on their own. So seeds and fruit are two different things. They, they come about differently. Um, some of seeds are edible, depending on what, what plant we're looking at, and they are also good sources of fiber, protein, fats, vitamins, and minerals. Um, a few examples are like pumpkin seeds. You can get those at the store that are already dried out. They're called papitas. Sometimes you'll see them, and you can eat um, pumpkin seeds. A lot of people we eat sunflower seeds, poppy seeds, sometimes we put into foods, sesame seeds, sometimes you'll see those on the outside of a bun, a hamburger bun, or on bread. Those are important seeds that you eat to get those nutrients. Um, when they're a mature fertilized ovule of a plant consisting of three parts, right? We're going to look at the three separate parts here of the ovule, meaning reproductive, right? 
we have the embryo and the embryo is where the new plant forms and it has to be subject to certain conditions you have to have the right conditions to get that embryo to form the endosperm is where the food is that's the food store and then the seed coat is that protective coat covering over top of the seed let's look I did a little drawing here also of a seed this is a typical what's called a dicotyledonous two cotyledons and this is a bean we all know what beans are so this is sort of like a kidney bean or a lima bean. You have the seed coat on the outside. You have this plumal here, which is what's going to sprout up as the plant. You have the hypocotyl, and that is um, just a little axis around the rest of it. It also has a hilum. Remember where we take the seed out and we have that little scar. Um, a micropile, and this is the cotyledon where all of those nutrients are. Um, here's, our, here's how our plant sprouts. There are the roots. It has one big primary root and all these little accessory roots. And it starts to sprout up and kind of curves around and then the seed coat will start to form. After we get that, we're going to get some leaves and that's what they, they are called true leaves. Here's our cotyledon and there's our seed coat. And then this is all going to encase our, our seed so that we can get a plant from our seed. Um, the seed of a typical monocot, that was a dicot, two cotyledons. This just has one. The example um, I gave you is corn, the pericarp, that hard outer covering here, the endosperm by which it feeds, and then we can see our one cotyledon here, and our pumal or radical, and all these other different ones. This, when you see rhiza like this in biology, it means root. So that's where our root is going to come from. So what exactly is a cotyledon? It's a seed leaf that's within the embryo. So we have the embryo and we have our little seed in inside of there. And it helps to supply the nutrition that that plant embryo needs to germinate. So germinate means it's going to become a plant, correct? So it's going to give all that nutrient to that and become established as um, a photosynthetic organism. We know we need green leaves to photosynthesize. Size. We've talked about that before. So those are called seed leaves. So we get the photosynthesis, which gives the seed that, that fertilizer it sort of needs. Um, an example are the first and second leaves that sprout from a sunflower. Or maybe when you were in grade school, or maybe when you're going to be in grade school, you take a little bean and you plant it, and you get to see those come up out of the, up out of the ground. Let's look at monocots versus dicots. We know mono means one and di means two. So in a monocot, we have one seed leaf. In a dicot, we have two seed leaves. And then monocots are narrow grass-like leaves. They look like little strips. They're very thin. Whereas dicots have veins and branches in them and it's, it's a bigger leaf. Um, in a monocot, they have parallel leaf veins. And in a dicot, they're reticulated. Reticulate means move back and forth, right? Uh, monocot, we have those fibrous roots, and in dicots, we have a main, what's called a tap root. And it has all these, here's our tap root, or our main root, or our primary root, and all of those little bunches of roots that spread out from it. Sometimes you'll see that, if you ever pulled a carrot out of the ground and you see those little tiny roots that come from it, the carrot's the main root, but the little branches come from it. Monocots, um, flower parts, and multiples of three. So here we have one, two, three flowers, and one, two, three leaves flower petals. So they're uh, around here trillium has three, tr tri means three, three little leaves like this and three little um, uh, petals and that's that is a monocot plant whereas dicot flowers we're going to have multiples or four or five. So if you see a flower that has five petals or four petals most likely it arose from a dicot plant. Monocots, their pollen has a single pore, just one little pollen granule. And in dicots, they have three or four pores. So just some certain like um, anatomy of the different leaf types and how they would, how they would um, develop. Lastly, we're going to look at what is an akene. And I thought a lot of people have those, um, we used to call them helicopters when we were little, uh, the two sides like this and you throw them up and they spin down. That's not necessarily a seed or a root or um, a fruit, it's an akene. And it's kind of like one seeded, but it lacks special seams that split and release the seed. So they don't have special things that break apart and just release the seeds. That's why they have those little things on them to help carry them. And the seed coat is attached to a thin, dry ovary wall by a little tiny short stalk. 
then the seed is easily freed from the husk as in buckwheat. So buckwheat is one example of that. Uh, fruits are in the buttercup family and the rose family. They all have these akines. So they're attached here, the little wings they call them. This is acer. Acer around here are maple trees. You have acer rubrum, red maple, maple. You have you know sugar maples, different types of maple trees. Here's our little tiny pericarps here and those will break apart and then we can have one side and then this is uh, Alianthus, um, the tree of heaven. Alianthus is also sunflowers, that's their genus name. I should have underlined these, I'm sorry. And then we have the pericarp. So what we want to do is we want to put our practical knowledge into and uh, to apply it because what's the use of knowing something if you can't apply it? We are going to do a little experiment and if you would like to try this at home you can or you can just come and try it with us. So if you come over here we have some examples of some nuts that are, that are encased. We can look at, you know, go back and look at the pericarp here where the nut once was here. And then we can also look here at the pericarp that's dried. And if we crack this a little bit in here, we're going to put this right on the table. If you notice on the inside, there's the walnut. And a lot of you, that's good to eat. I love walnuts. And then we can look here, we have hickory nuts, and we have these are called buckeyes. So our experiment, what we're going to do, and if you would like to do it at home, we're going to take some of this water and we're going to wet a paper towel. And you can use any type of paper towel that you have at your house, but probably pretty absorbent so that it will keep that water in there for a long time. And you can get tap water. I'm going to use a little bit of bottled water and we're going to wet this paper towel. <clears throat> get it pretty wet. You want it to be pretty wet to last you for a while. And we, can wet, we can wet a few of them with that amount of water, can't we? And then we're going to get these wet and we're going to place our nuts right inside of this wet paper towel. And this, um, they need to be, they're going to be, stay hydrated within this little paper towel. So let's take and we're going to, let's wrap up um, one of these Buckeyes. You're going to wrap it snugly and securely within the paper towel like this. Make sure that you have them wrapped up. Let's try a couple of these little hickory nuts. We're going to wrap these up. I'm going to try to get them very nice. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place these in your refrigerator, not the freezer. We don't want to freeze them. We want to place them in our refrigerator until the middle of April. So we're not going to mess with them. We don't take them out and look at them. We keep them in there. And, we're go and we are going to, as a group, you there that are watching and me, we're going to take these out of our refrigerator in April and see what happens to those and then we're going to talk about the next process. So this video is sort of like two parts. The beginning introduction and then the actual application of the processes. So if you have any questions we would love for you to put them below. And if you have any other ideas or what you think this is going to look like you could put some ideas on there in the bottom whenever we look at this in April and we would um, love to hear those. We would like to thank you very much for tuning into our videos and we will see you next time with the Literacy Volunteers of Harrison County.